Okay, we're going to go over a couple basic things in Illustrator to get everybody started. Uh, the first thing is what Illustrator is. Illustrator is a vector graphics program. It is different than a raster graphics program. Basically, it means that we're dealing with math rather than pixels. And I'll, I'll show you kind of what I mean as we, as we go on, but there's some basic components that you'll need to understand. So first, let's open up a new document. I'm going to create this for uh, print, make it there, change my points to inches because I understand inches more than I do points, more familiar with them. Uh, CMYK 300 is fine. Okay, so here's your basic workspace for Illustrator. Over here on the left, we have the toolbar. This is where all of your main tools are. You can see it as uh, double. Um, I prefer single column. Um, you can kind of move these around and adjust them. If you look here, um, anything that has a triangle in the lower right hand corner means that there are additional tools underneath it. For example, the pen tool um, has different options, uh, add anchor point tool, subtract anchor point tool, convert anchor point tool. Those are all related to. Um, also, as you change these tools up here, um, you will notice that this bar along the top, uh, the option bar up here, will change based on which tool that you have selected. So you can uh, change things around. For example, I'm on the type tool right now, and that means that I can do things like change the font, uh, the font size, the alignment, uh, things like that on the option bar. On the right, this, this may look drastically different to what you're seeing. Um, you have you have kind of a group of palettes. Um, you can change which palettes that you have here and what you're seeing uh, with this little menu. Um, if you don't see a palette or if you want to see uh, the names of the palettes, um, you can drag this out. But if you don't see a palette there, then you can come up here to Window. These are alphabetized. And from this line down, you're going to be able to pull up palettes. If you want to get your character for your paragraph palettes, those are the two main palettes that you'll use to control your typography. Um, I know and have kind of organized where I like to have things, so I can I can just use these symbols um, to jump back and forth, and uh, and that's basically kind of an introduction to um, kind of the layout of Illustrator. Uh, it's different than a raster-based or pixel-based program because it uses math. So. What, what that means is that all of the objects are going to be scalable. And uh, scalable means that you can make them any size and, and the image won't break down. You, you can draw something the size of a postage stamp. So let's say I come in here like this. I'll show you how to do this later. Um, but if I have something that's, you know, one inch by one inch, um, you know, I can draw it this big. Uh, later I can come back and I can expand that to be 40 feet by 40 feet. And uh, there will be no image quality loss. Everything will be grand because it is vector. And that's that's why you would use Illustrator. Uh, very rarely we'll use Photoshop to create logos or anything else that needs to be scalable. It needs to go into multiple uh, applications, embroidery, uh, screen printing, a billboard, a poster. You want to use Illustrator to create your assets for those because they are vector. Last things that are going to be helpful when we're talking about Illustrator. But the rulers and guides are very important. If you don't have the rulers up, you can just press Apple R. That'll bring them up. If they are not in something that makes sense to you, for example, most people are not familiar with pikas anymore, uh, you can right-click up here and you can change it to inches or you can change it to pixels, and that's going to be a lot more helpful for most of you. If you want to reset where uh, where your origin is, you can, you can click and drag this corner up here. I usually just keep everything clicked right to the upper left-hand corner. Notice that's zero here and zero there. And uh, if you want to put down guides, you can drag guides down from the left or from the or from the top. And uh, these guys will even uh, these guides will even rotate. Uh, and we can go more into different things that you can do with these guides later. But unlock the guides, select them, delete them, whatever. Uh, you can also bring up by pressing Apple Quote. Uh, you can bring up kind of a grid. You can have guides. Several of them. The app colon will hide or show the guides. Uh, those guides do show up in your layers palette. 
So you can have an entire layer of guides if you want, lock that layer, hide that layer, show that layer. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to know about is your fill color and your stroke color. Uh, they affect everything from your text to your objects. Uh, when you have a red line like this, it means that you have no fill or no stroke. Whichever one of these is on top is considered active. And when you make changes, it only changes the one on top. So if I want to change the fill color, then I'd have to do click on that. You can switch back and forth by pressing X. You can switch which color goes to which thing by pressing Shift X. And you can always go back to default by pressing D. Default is typically a white fill and a black stroke. Whatever you have selected um, will become uh, whatever object you create. So if I create a square right now, it has the properties that are shown in my fill and my stroke. This also ends up down here. These can be filled with a pattern. They can be filled with a gradient. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do. But those are all contained by the path of a, of a shape or an object. I know I said one, two last things, but there's a third that I want to make sure everybody understands. The layers palette and the artboards. These are two different things, but they kind of control the workspace. So the layers palette, I'm going to get rid of these guides. So now we have nothing. We have layer one. This is our main layer. If I start creating shapes, you notice that, that those shapes are showing up in my layers palette. Let's just uh, so you can kind of see them. Okay, so each time I create a shape, or each time I type a word, okay, those, those things show up in the layers palette. Now, there's a couple things that are useful to understand about the layers palette. You can select multiple objects by holding shift. You can select these like this by clicking on this little circle. You hold shift, you can select multiple. You can delete those. You can create a new layer. You can drag some of these items to that new layer. That way you can hide and show specific items or control groups of items on a different layer. You can name these layers by double clicking on the text. If you double click away from the text, you can control the highlight color. So if I'm going like this, and I double click away from the text, I can change that to a, a yellow. Notice everything changes to a yellow. Okay, this is yellow. So there's, there's different ways to do things like that. Then within, within these things, you can also group things up. Press Apple G. And now within that, there, there is a group. You can have groups within groups. You can drag things into groups. So let's say we want multiple items within a group to be grouped up. We have groups within groups. These little triangles, when they face to the right, are collapsed. When they face down, are opened up. But uh, layers are extremely important to pay attention to when you're creating a bunch of objects. Uh, name your layers, name your objects, so that you kind of know what's going on. That's going to be very, very helpful. Um, also, the other thing is artboards. Uh, this is kind of a newer in the last couple of versions. Uh, you can do multiple page layouts. Shift O will bring up your artboard tool. This is what your artboard tool looks like. Um, you can just click and drag. You can hold Alt and you can make copies of your artboards. Notice these artboards are like this now. And the order that they are in this palette will be the order that they show up in like a multiple page PDF if you were to export them as multiple page PDF. There are a lot of options up here. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but if you have this clicked, then when you click and drag, it'll click all the things and all the objects and all of the uh, text boxes and everything that are within that artboard. So you can have multiple artboards. Uh, you can set up a document at the very beginning. When you say new, you can choose the number of artboards and how they paginate, uh, the spacing that you have in between them. And, and all of that. So you can kind of go like this and then you click OK. OK, and it'll create equal sized artboards for you.
that's it for kind of how Illustrator works. We'll talk about tools in the next video. Um, become familiar with it, but pay attention to your artboards, pay attention to your layers, and especially pay attention to your fill and stroke colors um, as you are creating objects and moving things around.